What's going on there folks? Good morning. Good Saturday morning. It is the weekend, uh, Saturday, April 9th, 2022. It's about 10, 15 a.m. California time here. Super windy outside. No issues with the stream or uh, any data internet uh, connections, which is good so far. Expecting uh, 50 mile per hour winds out here uh, throughout the day today. Here in Northern California, so 5.0, the latest quake up here around Taiwan. Let's go ahead and check out some movement that we've been watching this morning. And overnight, uh, seen a little bit of activity here. Kick up around the Taiwan area and also up here on the northern end of the Pacific Plate, Pacific Ring of Fire, where we've seen a 5.7 earthquake strike here uh, earlier, uh, just about an hour or so ago. 25 kilometer depth for there uh, for that earthquake. It's been a while since we've seen anything sizable in this area. Uh, did see, of course, over the last week or so, some microquakes around the region of the Aleutian Trench, but this uh, uh, 5.7 here is about the largest we've seen far as anything above uh, 3.5 in this area for, for, for a little while. So a little bit of adjustment up here on the Northern Plate and also some further push here to the west around the Taiwan area with that 5.0. Uh, still watching for some possible movement here. In the Kurokamachaka Trench, uh, we did have one earthquake prior. This is, uh, looks like last night, a 4.2 off the coast of Russia, about 51 kilometers into the uh, subduction zone here. Uh, further south, a little bit of activity. All this movement prior to the 5.0 we just seen uh, within the last hour, quite a few fours up and down the uh, Philippine plate here, right next to the uh, Philippine Sea, and uh, some movement around the Indonesia area. Uh, Vanuatu, seen some activity. Of course, last night uh, we had this deep, super deep earthquake activity, uh, almost down to 600 kilometers below surface for some of those fours there in the Fiji Islands area. Of course, uh, we're still waiting. I know I mentioned last night to watch this area down here in New Zealand and also this area up here in the northern part of the Pacific Plate. So it looks like we're starting to get uh, some movement up here, but we're kind of watching this area down here in the Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area, uh, for some further movement following this deep earthquake activity in the Fiji Islands area. I want to check out the GeoNet uh, servers here real quick. Let me pull them up, stand by for just a second here. GeoNet, there we go. Popping up. Uh, looks like they had a little bit of movement, uh, 3.8 about two hours ago, uh, and then a 2.6, couple smaller quakes, so looks like uh, maybe possibly seeing some start, a uh, little earthquake activity here around the North Island, uh, New Zealand. I'm not going to check all the other maps here as far as like the uh, deleted events, but uh, yeah, a little bit of activity kicking up here, North Island, New Zealand region. Uh, USGS, of course, not showing it here, but still 3.8. I think we're watching for some further movement uh, a little bit higher than that in that region. Considering the depth of those earthquakes that struck there in Fiji yesterday. South America, man, look at that. Not a zip zero going on here in the 4.0 and above. I do want to verify this with the EMSC model. Make sure we don't uh, aren't missing some quakes. EMSC um, tends to report these earthquakes pretty uh, sufficiently. Look at that. 4.5 at uh, 1628 UTC time. 1628. So almost an hour ago, uh, this earthquake has been up on the map. Uh, they're in the uh, Chile region. And that's definitely above a 4.0, right? 4.5 USGS slacking today guys got to get this system working a little bit better uh, around the uh, Santa Domingo area Puerto Rico still seeing that little swarm of activity up here around the Puerto Rico trench um, most of this is from last night had a couple this morning but uh, still watching this area possibly for some uh, further movement uh, let's see what else we got here West Coast United States one little earthquake up here. This is going to be deep, right? Yep, 1.6 at 19.3 uh, kilometers. So, subduction zone earthquake here along the Cascadia Megathrust region. Uh, of course, we have seen some 
some movement here up and down the uh, region of the Cascadia, including some activity further offshore into the Blanco Fracture Zone. You, you got to picture this as a regional uh, thing, a regional, um, I'm trying to think of the word, pressure point, pressure area. This area is always underneath the gun here when it comes to the subduction zone, but you got to back out and picture this as a whole. You got two major plates here. You got the uh, Pacific plate over here and the North American plate all kind of uh, doing its thing here uh, and creating quite a bit of pressure regionally along the Cascadia subduction zone and the west coast in general. Uh, so this area, along with the trimmer that we've been seeing in the Pacific Northwest, uh, is under quite a bit of uh, regional pressure in this region. So Blanco Fracture Zone, of course, seeing a couple fours out here. This is the area where we've seen a pretty good amount of swarming. I'm trying to think if it was this year or uh, the end of last year, but we had quite a few fours kicking off here and a pretty significant swarm. And that's kind of where these fours kicking off uh, today are located. But uh, still, a little bit of earthquake activity out here on the Cascadia. We had one over here yesterday along the, uh, uh, right up here along the locked area of the Cascadia Megathrust region with a, what was it, a uh, 1.7. Nothing, nothing too big, but still seeing some uh, movement here. The subduction zone here along the Cascadia is unlike uh, uh, other subduction zones where you see, uh, you see a bunch of fours and fives and occasional sixes pop up here along the Peru Chile Trench. The Cascadia doesn't really do that. The locked area of the Cascadia just kind of builds and builds and builds and then it just pops into a mega thrust earthquake. Uh, you can have the southern segment here pop with a at least an 8 to an 8.5 magnitude and then you can have the full rupture of the Cascadia anywhere from 8.5 up to uh, like 9.2 in the um, magnitude scale. So it's just you, you don't see like you know fives or sixes up and down here on this region of the Cascadia. Uh, maybe we'll cover that a little bit more. We'll check out historical data within this area, um, at least as far as um, our recent history goes uh, since record keeping began along this area. Of course, 1700, right? The last mega quake out there along the Cascadia. Uh, <clears throat> what do we got, folks? Aside from that, in the southern part of the state, not anything major going on. In fact, it looks like it's eerily quiet once again down here in Southern California. Only 14 earthquakes of uh, pretty much below 2.5. Look at that. Nothing showing up on the 2.5 map. So all these are very small microquakes. Uh, we did see one earthquake off here off the coast of Baja, 3.2. Uh, 26 kilometers. See, that's pretty deep here. I've been seeing quite a bit of deeper movement in Southern California uh, and the Pacific side of the plate boundary over the past few months and uh, early last year. So there's definitely some uh, major adjustment going on down there, which uh, of course puts the uh, further strain out here along the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. San Andreas definitely uh, under quite a bit of uh, uh, pressure it hasn't really seen too much movement here <laughs> at all. Go ahead and check out the last 30 days or so of activity. Uh, a little bit of swarming we had on the Brawley Seismic Zone and also the Imperial Fault down here. Seen some movement. San Jacinto Fault Zone, of course, that's um, does build up quite a bit of stress. It's a pretty lengthy fault zone, and you got the Elsinore Fault System here as well. But the San Andreas Fault Zone from about Desert Hot Springs southward to the Salton Sea is the uh is going to be the culprit of possibly an 8.1 earthquake here pretty soon i have a feeling uh, it's just been all too quiet in terms of uh, uh historical data we haven't seen that that uh, adjustment here on this plate and we know it's there right we get quite a bit of uh, accumulated slip rate building up yearly and uh, it's just a matter of time before that spring uh, decides to release the energy that's been storing up here uh, desert southwest let me let's see what we got here in Alamo. Still a little bit of swarming out here around the Alamo, Nevada area. Uh, Desert Southwest, Arizona, New Mexico. Not a whole lot going on. Texas, Oklahoma, about the same. Watch out, though. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday got a severe weather threat out here. Uh, potential three days of activity here around 
a uh, big swath of the area of the southern plains into Texas and eventually heading to the south as well. So be weather aware folks, tornado potential looks very high uh, out here around Tuesday and Wednesday. Eastern part of the country, not a whole lot going on, right? Not a zip zero. And uh, just check the Earthquakes Canada map here, there's not a whole lot going on up there either uh, in terms of uh, recent seismic activity. The last one here was way up here on the Yukon, it looks like, with that 1.6 um, at about 7.1 kilometers. And I believe that was from uh, yesterday or late last night with that uh, timestamp there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, we'll go ahead and check these guys out. Not a whole lot going on. Pretty calm before the storm, maybe? I, who's, who knows? Well, I guess we will see how this plays out today. Uh, let's see, nothing really going on on the data buoy systems at the moment, I don't believe. No unusual currents or uh, adjustments out there with the water height for now. Volcanic activity, a couple new volcanoes added here onto the USGS Weekly Volcanic Activity Report. Costa Rica, Colombia, and, and uh, uh, Bali seeing a little activity, nothing major. Costa Rica area uh, had some, uh, looks like a little explosion uh, around the north wall, generating a little plume that rose about 500 meters above the crater. Activity there lasted for just a couple minutes. But other than that, still just seeing continued volcanic activity around the uh, areas. I typically see them, right? Pretty active here on the map. One thing that's just been absent is volcanic activity here along the west coast. Cascades. It's just, it's been kind of eerily quiet in that term of, uh, you know, volcanic movement. Not a whole lot going on. We'll, we'll double check the. Uh, this is the trimmer map from last night, by the way. But we're going to double check the uh, volcanic seismographs here. Just see what we got cooking around the uh, area. We'll check out Crater Lake, Oregon. Sometimes these guys see a little bit of swarming up here in the area. Beautiful lake. But no doubt it is volcanic, right? coffee love coffee <laughs> that is a mess of I don't know what I know we got some wind events uh, that definitely got a lot of wind going on up there I don't see anything popping up here even if there was an earthquake on this type of map we would be able to see it some type of defined line but uh, yeah the, everything looks pretty clear here at Crater Lake region not a whole lot going on there uh, Mount Rainier, we'll check this out here uh, real quick and see what we got. A couple stations out here. I know yesterday uh, or last night during the update, we've seen a little bit of activity kicking up within the past couple hours uh, when we were doing the update. And that kind of looks like looks like it's about the same here. i uh, seen some movement, uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here at Mount Rainier. This is very well-defined earthquake uh, I think anyone will know that nothing big uh, very small probably under a 0.5 uh, if that and some other very small ones there so but either way a little bit of a seismic activity occurring there at Mount Rainier a couple other smaller ones in the mix uh, let's see here what else we got uh, Solar weather activity, we did have a little sea flare pop up, surprisingly, uh, overnight, kind of kicked up here into the C, into the C category, looks like maybe a C point, uh, they don't have it on here, Let's see what that was, are we going to work, not for sure what's going on here, all right. But yeah, it looks like maybe a, a mid-sea uh, flare that did pop up. Uh, they were only shown a 30% chance of a sea flare. I'm not even for certain where uh, that uh, flare came from. Possibly from the far side sunspots over here. Uh, it's going to be one of these maybe. Because uh, the, the majority of these sunspots here do not look super dynamic in uh, producing anything significant. Not even a sea flare. 
So it had to have been from one of these spots here. Uh, that uh, is probably earth, earth, or uh, facing away from the earth, I should say. But other than that, folks, not a whole lot going on. Just dealing with a whole bunch of wind, creating a lot of static in the air. It's a very dry wind out here. Uh, I'm not liking it one bit. Not liking it one bit, let me tell you. So I am trying to get this thing going. I've already been approved here by YouTube on memberships uh, for the channel. I'm setting up some custom emojis and some uh, other things as far as perks go uh, when it comes to memberships here on the YouTube channel, the Earthmaster. So look for that in the coming days. Probably roll it out next week and see how that does. Uh, of course, membership uh, will be getting extra perks and extra videos and we'll probably add some uh you know some behind the scenes stuff here when we're doing the updates and whatnot uh for those memberships and those people that do join the membership program here for the channel uh, i think it'd be kind of cool uh let's see what else is the emsc reporting they're reporting a lot of earthquake activity here i don't think we covered the uh that area of the world i want to check that out real quick go back and see what we missed here I'm not maybe I didn't see it on the USGS map yeah they had a 5.3 out there in Turkey but it looks like there's a pretty good swarm of movement uh, in that region on the EMSC model uh, this one was at about 10 kilometers um, a few hours ago in the Turkey area let me double check the EMSC how many quakes are reporting out there on the globe it looked like quite a bit uh, we'll zoom into the region here and uh, eastern Turkey quite a bit there's that 5.3 and a whole bunch of aftershocks in there as well one thing we haven't seen is a whole bunch of movement over here recently kind of seems like it's been that way since the uh, 7.3 earthquake there in the uh, just off the coast of uh, Japan a couple weeks ago Looks like a 3.9 around the Mediterranean there. So, alrighty guys, uh, I'm gonna jump off here. Have a great day. Please stay safe out there. And uh, for some reason, the stream goes down. I'll definitely get it back up. We do have, like I mentioned, uh, quite a bit of wind coming in today. But so far, knock on wood, everything's holding up and staying steady. We'll chat you guys a little bit later, folks. A little bit later tonight.